Even if you try, you wouldn't understand it. Maybe something's missing inside of you. Hi guys, welcome to a new Dream Body series video. I am so excited to tell you what I've been up to and I know that a lot of people have been asking for an update and especially in video form. So grab a cup of coffee, tea or kombucha and let's just get into it. So there are a couple of themes that I really wanna talk about and I think it is important because it just breaks the whole process down in little subjects because I could talk and talk and talk for hours about all the different things, but I think if I break it down in a couple of themes and then in the next video a couple of themes it will be more digestible for people Let's start with the first theme and that is prioritize yourself. This is going to be the basis of everything you want in life. If you don't work on this part, it is always going to fluctuate because you achieving your goals won't be connected to external things if you don't prioritize yourself. But if you do prioritize yourself, then that is the basis which you can rely on. And it's like you have that under control. You don't have the weather or other people or what happens to you under control, but how you respond, how you decide on things, it's all within your control, but you need to prioritize yourself. And by that, I mean your goals. And the thing that's underneath this, which makes it harder for people to do, is that you need to know that you deserve to have what you desire. And that is where the gap usually comes in. So you actually have to say to yourself, I deserve to have what I desire. Desire, I am worthy. And prioritizing myself is not selfish. It is what's going to fill me up, which will in turn create a happy person who can give more to the world. But first, it starts with prioritizing yourself. So this can look different for everybody, whether it being to have to cook for yourself instead of the whole family or cooking for the whole family, but different things. So it fits within your goals, taking time away maybe from your partner, kids, friends, etc. I'm not saying do that, but it could look like that because maybe now you need time to add workouts to your schedule or I don't know, other things that will take you to your goal. When all of this did not exist before, it might annoy the people around you because you're taking away from their comfort in what you used to provide for them. And now you're like chipping away at that because you need to provide for yourself. And it's gonna feel selfish for some people and some people might even say that it is selfish to you, but you need to be strong. <laughs> I've gone through this, trust me. And eventually what will happen is you'll end up with more miserable people than you being selfish, providing for yourself, prioritizing yourself, like defining your wants and needs and desires and then seeing what you need to do in your current life in order to get there. And then when people call you selfish, it could be hard, but you need to stick to it because the person you'll become is a much happier, fulfilled person. And that kind of person will always radiate more positivity towards the people around them. But the people around you are not aware of that fact. They get the hit at the beginning when something is taken away and the result isn't there yet. Remember that you're not doing that for them, but it is good to understand that what, what could happen, what the process might be so you're prepared and you'll stay strong through all of this. And especially I think it's important to communicate with your loved ones. If you don't know what to say, say something like, I believe this is going to make me happy or happier and I need to try it in order for me to see what it feels like. But if I don't pursue this, I will always wonder what would have happened. This is not about you or everyone else, but about me being better for me. And trust me, whatever comes out of this process, I will learn from it. You might not understand it, but I'm asking you to respect it. It is very important to me. And you know, some people might even get intimidated that you are taking time to change yourself to something you prefer to like better yourself and that is scary for the people around you because they are very 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 I repeat very comfortable with who you are right now if you change that puts them in danger not only because it puts emphasis on them not changing or bettering themselves but also in where they stand with you like what if you become more liked what if you become more popular more interesting more knowledgeable just like more Will they then be enough? 
enough next to you, enough in general, it messes with their level of comfort. And I think it's very important to be aware of this before and during your weight loss journey so that you don't get gaslighted by gaslighted, gaslit by people projecting on you, even if they have valid points. If they do not want you to pursue something that you think is going to make you happy, then it is most likely because they're scared, threatened, and intimidated. So sometimes it can be really hard to detect that. I mean, you have known these people for a long time and there is a reason that they're in your close circle, but talking to someone about this process, especially someone outside of that circle, can be very helpful to navigate all those things thrown at you. For example, a therapist can be very useful to guide you through what you want, what you think, and what parts of your struggles might be projections of other people around you and how to like navigate that because it's a tough place to be sometimes. And you know, I make these videos to help you guys see what like the, the process in the food and the workout is. And I can also like tell you things about the mental stuff, but it's always gonna be a very personal process. And you know, you can, you can see what I eat in a day. You can see my workout routine. You can get all that information, I don't care. But what is going to happen on those nights where you feel really, really bad about yourself, when the voice inside your head is not being nice to you, when you feel lonely, when you feel heartbroken, or those days with friends where food is a part of the gathering and you're choosing to eat less or something else and it draws negative attention towards you. Like these are really real things and I don't hear people speaking about it enough. What are you going to do when people offer you food and you want to be polite and accept but actually don't crave it and want to be more respectful towards your own cravings and body? Like what will happen on those days? I'm not saying, I'm not against um, having like delicious foods. If you've been following me for a long time, you know that that's 100% part of the process, but sometimes you're not craving it. And it's just like out of politeness that you accept it. And I don't, I don't believe in that anymore. But like, that was a really hard thing for me because I would sometimes go home and be f feeling so sad about going past my own mm, boundaries because someone would feel bad if that if I didn't eat the food that they offered. Like if they if I'm gonna go for dinner and they make the food, that's a different story. But if they keep offering me like cookies and, and cakes and all of that and I don't want to, like especially in my culture it's a thing, like food is part of everything. And if you don't eat, that's really unpolite. <laughs> that can be a hard thing to navigate sometimes, you know? Again, I believe a therapist can be very helpful and I know that it is not an easy process to find a therapist that fits your needs or even find one in your area. Area, and that is where the sponsor of this video comes into play. I'm very proud to announce that this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. As I said, I know that finding the right therapist can be daunting, especially if you have limited options in your area. Like, I don't know where you live, but not every area in the world has a lot of therapists and not like therapists that fit your style. But BetterHelp has a network of over 30,000 therapists, which means you have access to a wide range of expertise and specialties. And if you don't feel like your therapist is the right fit, you can just easily switch to someone new at no extra cost. So if you are ready to prioritize your mental health and build a more positive relationship with food and your body, I really encourage you to give BetterHelp a try. Go to this link or select my channel name at sign up for a special discount off of your first month of therapy. Let me get my jacket straight for the second theme and let's show a little bit of hair, right? The second part is what are you feeding your mind? And this is going to be about vision board rules. Actually just one rule. This is a vision board rule that also applies to the images you feed yourself on social media, etc. but especially for your vision board because that is your personal creation of what you want to manifest. So think about what your body goal is. Is it even possible? As in do you want to be taller, a different skin color, different eye shape? I know that surgery is possible, but that is not what I'm at. What I mean by this is if you open yourself up to images of people that are inherently different looking, that will create a sort of a gap between you and what you want, like it not even being possible. So for instance, I always look for girls that kind of resemble my skin or hair color if I put things on my vision board. And not always though, but if a girl has, for instance, really large breasts, I don't have that. 
and I'm not planning on getting surgery. But if I keep putting images of that on my vision board, my mind eventually will start to hate my own small boobs. So I'm also mindful around that because the images are feeding your brain and then all of it might get messed up if you're not being mindful around it. So that's a tip I really wanted to give you to like look at the images if you're into vision boards and Pinterest and stuff is to look at those images as like does the thing I want come with the package of things that I already have. So I would like see someone in Pilates in a Pilates outfit with a type of body that I aspire to have but so and then I make sure like usually it's a brunette it's like a little bit of my like features and stuff it doesn't always have to be that way but I naturally gravitate towards that because I can like see myself in that picture instead of someone with like blonde hair and I don't know big boobs as I mentioned usually I don't pose the next theme is are you even ready I honestly think this is one of the things that make or break your weight loss journey and not enough people are talking about it <laughs> I think I keep saying this in the whole video but yeah there's a lot of information about eating and working out as I said but trust me when I say that a weight loss journey that is sustainable is mostly a mindset thing why are you not at the weight you want like think about it for a second why are you not at the weight you want let's say if you give it a superficial reason like i don't have enough discipline or i like sweet things too much then you are not ready for sustainable weight loss it is only when you go deeper and ask yourself emotional questions that you will get to the core of it because those superficial answers are not the reason you are not where you want to be i can promise you that and I've said it before a lot of times that motivation and liking sweet things, it's, it's ridiculous because that's, not, that's never... Because people lose weight that eat sweet things. People lose weight that don't have motivation. If you knew what it would take to lose the weight, like actually no, I wish I could like get you to experience that feeling and like to keep it off, not just yo not yo-yoing because a lot of people can lose weight, but then they, they'll gain it because it's not sustainable in the way that they do it. If you could actually feel it, you will understand that every few pounds is how I see it comes with a different identity. And every step, every level of identity change that comes with a few pounds less, you have to heal or do something on self-development level to get there. And it's hardly ever just changing your food and workouts because if your workout and your diet is fueled by i want to lose weight from this identity then this because this identity is not already losing weight is not already working out then it's always going to be a thing of motivation trying to trying to eat healthy trying to go to the gym because this identity this person right now does not identify with a person that is a few pounds less. What I always found, found fascinating is that women that were already pretty slim and fit, that they got pregnant and then they would gain a bunch of weight, but then after pregnancy, they, will, they would like lose it pretty quickly. And not that it's like a good thing, but it's because their identity wasn't the one with more weight on them. Sometimes, of course, people struggle and not everyone has that. Usually it's people that are having a fit lifestyle that like work out and stuff, not people that are naturally thin and then they gain weight and I have no idea how to lose it. But I think you know what I'm saying is that their standard, their blueprint of life is at a lower weight. Their, their identity is at a lower weight. So they will not feel comfortable with a higher weight. Of course, that was necessary for an amazing purpose, but then the baby's out and life continues and then they do not identify with the person that is carrying more weight. So I always found it fascinating because you might be the person you are right now for multiple years in this 
in this body type and you've identified yourself with this body you might have marinated in this body type for many many years which has nothing to do with eating different and working out of course that's like the basic that's like physics but the identity change is what's really necessary so the identity of someone who is a few pounds less might be that she doesn't even think about should i go to the gym or not it's just just as normal as a cup of coffee so you know what's an interesting realization i had a couple of weeks ago is the fact that when people ask me like how did you lose the weight how did you like get to this body shape from the other one whatever but the thing that's like the biggest difference right now as in me being at my lightest and fittest and i'm like really happy with the shape and the shape that is also taking it is the fact that there is no arguing in my head around working out or not it's just like this is what's needed for me to be able to eat a certain amount and to look a certain way like fit and tight and stuff so there's no going back and forth in my head like i do have those days but then i just say like okay just like walk 10 minutes on the treadmill or i mean it's still different than it used to be like before it was always a struggle of trying to get out of it trying to find an easier way to get to my dream body state than just accepting that there's another level of working out and amount of eating and certain kinds of stuff eating like protein and stuff that is necessary as a baseline not as something i do when i'm motivated but like actually as a baseline and that's the biggest difference i've posted in the last 10 years on my blog social media any everything so i can easily go back i've also kept journals i can easily go back and see the struggle i had the amount of food i was eating which was not because i was that hungry when i worked out i really wanted to tell the world that i worked out and now like nine out of ten times i don't even like it's not even in my head to like take a picture or whatever even though i'm sharing this journey on social media it's just so normal to me it's like it's just as normal as getting a cup of coffee and i think that's one of the biggest shifts from five kilos before and now and every time i lose a certain amount of weight where i get to a new standard i'm another person so i will never go back to how i like how much i weighed before because that requires me to being another person like an actual other identity so that's what i've always been preaching so it's never about fast weight loss it's always about what are the struggles that are keeping me at this weight mentally so how do i need to tackle those to get to the next level also what actually has tackled me in the last five kilos or so which is from like 58 to uh, right now i'm like 53 54 kilos is the fact that i stopped caring about what other people think not completely because i don't believe that's possible as human but a lot and i was always afraid of getting criticism of people being intimidated by me or jealous or whatever and then lashing out at me projecting their insecurities or whatever so and i saw girls attacking other girls that looked good like good as in the society norms of good so i always felt the need to be mediocre so that i wouldn't trigger anyone I got a secret it's funny because if you look at my social media you would say yes i do act differently now that i lost weight because i post more i show myself more what is tied to me showing myself more for me this is tied to some really hurtful moments i kept myself so small and so apologetic to never hurt others and then i got hurt which made me break down really bad but with a lot of hardship in life it really can make you stronger and it did that for me i came back with a effort attitude towards all the things that were holding me back i was the biggest people pleaser and with that came also people pleasing with not becoming the person i wanted to become because i knew that i would trigger so many people i even saw how my friends especially girls treated other girls with like the perfect body and talked about them in such a horrible way so i was like i will stay medium-sized so no one can be intimidated by me and be mean to me <laughs> My body was also a part of me people pleasing and not stirring the pot it's actually the boldest and most authentic thing to me to work on getting to my dream body state and that is why i feel more confident the body is a side effect but 
a wanted effect, of course, of this mentality. I would never lose this amount of weight if I was still scared to be seen, to trigger people. It is not me losing weight, being happy and showing myself. It is me being so sick of keeping myself small, being hurt by people that I decided to F it all and go for what I want in life. And now that I'm getting away from mediocre, in my opinion, so I feel like I'm like putting effort to becoming, I don't know, it's so weird to say these things but like more more beautiful as society standards i actually do the things that society thinks is beautiful because i get a kind of reward from the world that is pretty weird and i really want to take advantage of it now that i can i've shared a lot about this on my instagram so it's not like i feel like i'm the most beautiful girl or whatever it's just that i, I do certain things so that i'm perceived a certain way and i get the benefits of it from the world and um it's crazy but it's a game and i keep my head straight and i play the game but what i want to say is that it comes with a lot of projecting and people being not nice to you for not even a reason and i'm such a people pleaser and i just feel like i want to be extra nice to prove that please don't judge me on how i look please don't judge me please don't judge me and I, it's almost like i want to go back and keep myself small or like don't do my hair don't do my makeup just to like not offend anyone or not intimidate anyone but that would be a shame that would be me going back to the previous version i hope that this doesn't come across as like arrogant or whatever but this is like really what i'm experiencing with like the least amount of emotion you know what i mean so it's not like i'm emotional around it i'm just trying to objectively tell you what my experience is with like beauty and standards and doing things like i feel like i was born as an average girl like really just average and i feel like a lot of people are average but if you tweak certain things you can be perceived more beautiful than in your natural state and i feel like there are few people that in their natural state are actually really really beautiful as in the norms that we have put on society like with society but for me and for a lot of other girls as well i think that we're average and we can just do things and that's keeping your hair healthy, getting your teeth fixed and straight, your teeth white, your eyebrows, your body like healthy and stuff, glowing skin, all of those things, dressing accordingly to whatever like makes your features look better, better. I always want to say better or beautiful. It's with the, the norms of society. It's not like what everyone should think is better, but as we live in the age of now you know what i mean so yeah that's how i think because that's also how i experimented with it and i like i see what is happening it's pretty effed up but i'm also like you know what i'm just gonna take advantage of it and not in the sense that advantage of people but as in what the world is giving me for being put together when i leave the house it's crazy it's crazy discounts people opening the door people letting me go first just like so many things and i'm not gonna lie it's usually from men as sometimes women but it's usually from men and men are in a lot of positions of power and i feel like becoming a little bit above average you get to go in the rooms where big decisions might be made and then it's up to your character and your personality to actually deliver. So that's how I feel about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, everything to help with my channel. Thank you again for BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I'm so excited. And don't forget to visit this link if you're interested in BetterHelp and to get a discount of your first month. Thank you again for watching and see you next time. Bye.